Yeah, redwood is really one of the easiest plants to put in culture. Um, you think that redwood grows from burl, uh, and what we're really doing is we're culturing burl. That little lump down there at the bottom started as a piece of redwood leaf. So I started with a, a tip like that, and then as it got bigger down at the bottom, it got, uh, it got burl-like, and you can see the new plants coming out of it. There's a small new plant in the center is a little bigger one. Hello, my name is Bill Graham. I'm the maker of the Microclone and Superstarts Plant Tissue Culture Kits. We're at Monster Garden in Roner Park and I wanted to show you the contents of the tissue culture kits. This is the manual for the kit and the DVD. The DVD will have all of your procedures inside. There's the manual. But a lot of the videos, in particular the mixing videos, have been updated online. And if you're watching this, you will look for tissue culture mixing videos. Also, in the kit, you will get a tool kit. This has a pair of forceps, a stainless steel scalpel, and two blades, a roll of uh, polypropylene tape, which we'll use for sealing the bottles, just as an extra precaution. Not absolutely necessary, but when you get started, it's best to use every precaution you can. Also very handy if you are transporting vessels like I have here. All of these guys have been wrapped with the, with the tape. There is a mason jar lid and screen that we will use on the washing jar where the original plant pieces will be taken from a mother plant, washed with bleach water and alcohol, and then planted into the tissue culture. So this is the lid to your wash jar the world's smallest pH correction and monitoring kit. So we've got pH test strips with a color chart and up and down solutions. This will get you started and probably be as much solution as you need for years of tissue culture because you're often only using a drop or two at a time. You may want to shop for a digital pH pen because they work so much better and they are so much more accurate. But to get you started, there are pH testing strips included. The kit will also come with a rack and 18 uh, polypropylene tubes with screw tops. These guys will be tubes just like this. Uh, the tubes are nice for the first time you're putting plants in tissue culture because we can make two of these for every one of these. This is 10 milliliters of medium. This is 20. Uh, also, these vessels are nice if you're trading plants or shipping plants. This is the tube that ships well if you were to put it in an envelope uh, or a package and send it um, without light for a few days. The medium attaches, it holds well to the uh, narrow walls. There's a lot of surface area contact there. Your kit is also going to have a bag of 30 baby food jar lids. These, will be, these are polypropylene lids that snap onto ordinary glass baby food jars. Baby food jars are the same everywhere in the world, which is nice because this kit is sold and purchased um, everywhere in the world. You have two options. The kit as it's prepared comes with flip top vials, just like these. Very handy because you can just open it with your thumb and close it. But as an option, I've included the lids, so this way, in the time that you have prepared your medium, you've got all of your plastic vessels with medium and have introduced plants into them. At the end of 25 or 30 days, you're going to want to move those plants into fresh vessels. You're going to want to trim them of any extraneous material and uh, any yellow leaves and move them into new bottles. Tissue culture is always about moving the plant into fresh medium. And that will be, uh, in this case, you can use the baby food jars. You can contact Monster Garden for more of the plastic flip top vessels. This just gives you an option. Later, when you're up, you have the kit and you're going through kind of the leapfrog fashion of plants in bottles, bottles waiting for plants, and using them over and over, you can choose if uh, you prefer the glass jars or the plastic vessels. The lids have been more popular for the kits sold overseas for the reason that the jars are available locally 
and the lids are much lighter and uh, smaller for shipping. Whereas the plastic bottles are light, but they are a big volume and it sometimes costs a lot, especially you guys in New Zealand and Australia. And lastly, uh, the medium ingredients. So the four media kits that come with the kit, come with the tissue culture kit, are these guys. And this is what makes the whole thing work. This is your base multiplication kit. I use the yellow label. This is our ordinary package of ingredients with nutrient salts in one bag, gel powder in a second bag, and a liquid bottle that's going to contain your hormone and your preservative. This is your multiplication version, and this is the first one that you'll use. Here is a the nutrient packet and our the gel to set it. So that's those are the three ingredients in a media kit. There are three kinds of media kits. The yellow label malt, which is the basic most common. Your kit will include two of the blue label malt-tdz and the reason uh, we've made two versions of the malt is uh, the TDZ has been more popular for some of the woodier and semi herbaceous plants and they both are very similar and most of the time work almost identical for the most of the plants that you'll put into culture but just in the interest of being able to provide variety we've included both items and this also will have the hormone and preservative in a bottle by itself of liquid as well as a nutrient pack and a gel pack. The lastly is the root kit, sort of self-explanatory. When you have grown and multiplied as many plants as you wish in the tissue culture, at the following month you're going to have three or four times as many of those plants and this is usually when you're going to start to take plants out of culture and put them into regular plug trays, the rooting stage of tissue culture. This gives you the opportunity to do pre-rooting of your one inch or three quarter inch tissue culture plants in tissue culture. So we can make up the exact same vessel with a rooting medium. This will have the rooting hormones as opposed to the branching hormones and that way the plants in the bottles will be able to double in size and begin to grow roots. And those will be the plants that you can take out and have a head start planting them into your ordinary root or plug tray. The one other item in the kit that I wanted to show you is the fact that the, um, first of all, the bottles also come in a perfect 10 by 20 polypropylene skeleton tray, which is very handy for um, holding all 50 of the vessels. They perfectly fit four to an ordinary baker's rack, which is my favorite shelf for lighting and growing the tissue culture plants. Um, but I've also included in the kit, and this is new, is an bo extra bottle of preservative. So what you'll see is this is a one-sixth strength, um, or five milliliters diluted into 30. And the reason I've done this is you could choose to use like five milliliters or so when you're making media to just double the amount of preservative here just for extra safety or if you've got uh, an experience getting some sort of contamination problem. Contamination problem, you should always try to do a second or third attempt at cleaning the plants using either a longer contact time or a higher strength of bleach or hydrogen peroxide. But I wanted to include some extra preservatives so that you have something in the media helping keep fungus down. And second of all is this is excellent to add a, a, like a milliliter or so to the water that you have, um, that you'll rinse the plants in, going way back to that washing jar and the mason, the mason jar with the screen top. The sterile water that you're gonna rinse that plant in can be, uh, can have an extra milliliter of preservative added to it so that you have a nice coating on the plant to protect it. That is the, those are the contents of the Microclone Plant Tissue Culture Kit. Yeah, redwood is really one of the easiest plants to put in culture. Um, you think that redwood grows from burl, uh, and what we're really doing is we're culturing burl. 
that little lump down there at the bottom started as a piece of redwood leaf. So I started with a, a tip like that, and then as it got bigger down at the bottom, it got uh, it got burl-like, and you can see the new plants coming out of it. There's a small new plant in the center is a little bigger one. Over to the side are three or four new ones, and then of course you got the great big one that's grown and turned up at the top and branched. So it's actually grown and turned upside down. I'm going to lift this up so you can see the bottom because sometimes you can see things from the bottom that uh, you would not see. But if you can tell, this has grown into probably 10 or 12 new plants. And every one of these can be divided, planted into new bottles, and give us all of this over again. You know, because we're not trying to, you know, create more bottles than we can actually handle. We're trying to create new plants. I'll just do enough of these that the pieces that come from them can be planted uh, into, um, can be taken from tissue culture and planted into regular uh, propagation trays and that the pieces that I put back into tissue culture, just move to a fresh bottle, will give me all of this over again. So for instance, if I know that this bottle can give me 12 new plants, I only need one piece to get 12 all over again. Now it's about six weeks old, but if I'm doing 50 of these, that's going to give me um, about 500 new plants every month. That's amazing. Or every six weeks. Um, yeah, it'll give me about 500 new plants every six weeks. And I'll still have the mother material the next month when I need 500 new plants. What we're doing is we're growing the plant uh, using regular nutrient and vitamins like uh, everyone's used to. Uh, but we're also adding sugar in here. So sugar is going to give this the energy to grow the hormone in this case is a branching hormone is going to give it a direction i want it to not grow roots which it hasn't but to give me lots of tops so this is a cytokinin which is the opposite of a rooting hormone these cytokinins are going to keep the plant short keep the nodes tight and give me um uh, prevent the growth of roots so i'm going to have a lot of a lot of branching and those branches are all going to be new plants i'll take those branches put them into uh, either root them directly into plugs or move them into the rooting version of tissue culture and that'll still leave me the original nugget that these are all growing from that I'll move into a brand new multiplication bottle and it'll grow all over again but what's happening this is self-contained we're not looking for so much photosynthesis as the sugars giving it energy to grow the container helps keep it small just like a fish is going to grow to the size of its its bottle, the, a fish is going to grow the size of its uh, tank, um, and uh, the hormone is going to give it a direction. In this case, it's going to be stay short and give me lots of branches. And that is the multiplication version of uh, tissue culture. Fascinating. It's, it, this is a mother plant. Sweden. Um, it's nice to have a, uh, a, a single size that works for everybody. And the lids that come in the package ideally fit over the threads. They don't thread on, they just snap on so that you can open and close these with one hand. Uh, the kit will come with 30 of these one ounce jars in a custom 13 by 16 inch uh, molded skeleton tray, just like this. So there's the tray. There are 30, 30 jars, all packed for shipping. You know, some people will prefer the glass jars because after not only are the vessels available wherever you are in the world, but the lids are small and light and easy to ship and cheap to ship. So we, there are always plenty of new lids available at monstergardens.com. I have two questions for you. Yes. Um, number one, how do you recommend that our viewers, users of the MicroClone kit, sterilize their water? And two, what exactly is in the preservative, or is it a proprietary recipe? It's a proprietary recipe. And if I told you, I'd have to bury it. I understand. No. But uh, actually, we have MSDS on the sheets, and I'm always uh, happy to provide it. It's an isothalazone ninone compound. There's two parts to it. But more importantly, it's food grade, and this is uh, this will be used uh, and um, on products consumed by humans, so that's okay, uh, in very low concentration. Sterile water. Sterile water is simply going to be filtered or even clean tap water that is put into um, jars and put into the pressure cooker at the same time that the gel is prepared. So 
uh, if you've seen the earlier videos, the media ingredients are all mixed together with sugar and they're all stacked inside a pressure cooker and you'll also see that we've added two or three small jars, six, eight ounces or so, of just tap water with mostly loose lids so that, that water will be sterilized as well during that pr uh, pressure cooking cycle and we will use it later to rinse the bleach water off of the plants that we want to put into tissue culture because we bleached them but now we need to rinse the bleach off and we don't want to use contaminated water so the sterile water is there and for those of you lucky enough to have your spare preservative solution you'll add a um, either one milliliter or even uh, even a fraction of a milliliter to that. And that is the Super Starts Plant Tissue Culture Kit. Super Starts Plant Tissue Culture Kit comes with all you see here. These are the baby food jars in the custom made tray. That's right. All sterile, I would assume. All um, actually clean. The sterilizing will happen in the pressure cooker. Uh, what is nice? Another reason I choose the polypropylene for these trays, uh, for the the glass and the plastic, is that when um, users start getting um, to where they're doing several of these at a time, uh, I found some of these guys had picked up secondhand autoclaves or dental autoclaves, uh, tattoo um, autoclaves, and the uh, tray. You can put all the jars in the tray, and the tray can go into the pressure cooker, too. We've seen the Super Starts and Microclone Plant Tissue Culture Kits. We've got a little brother to the group also. This is the TC Starter Kit. Uh, we put this together because in the original kits, uh, even though it has tons of ingredients and a lot of opportunity to set up your own lab at home, uh, it does uh, require the use of a pressure cooker, and then there's a step to prepare the medium that you're going to put the plants in. Now, if you're interested in the tissue culture and you want to put your toe in the water and get your plants into tissue culture gel and see them start to grow, but without the media preparation stage, we've made the starter kit so that the tubes already have prepared medium in it. Your kit will come with eight tubes just like this, and the medium's been prepared in our lab to have all the ingredients in it necessary to get your plants started. You're just going to need to take good clean cuttings, wash the surface of them with bleach, or bleach water as instructed, rinse that bleach water off with sterile water included in the kit, and then use the scalpel and forceps included in the starter kit to put the plant into the tubes. We've got eight tubes in a rack. This will give you your first three weeks or four weeks of tissue culture establishment. If your plants go to six or eight weeks, sometimes that happens. We're watching to make sure that they don't have fungus growing on them or something begin to grow in the bottle that we didn't invite. Um, what you do want to see is that the uh, plant adapts to the new environment, begins using the new solution of sugar, nutrients, and branching hormone to begin generating some growth. The growth that you'll see in that plant will be a little bit of the energy that came with it because the tissue that started this it's usually only about an inch and a half tall, but once it starts going up to two and a half inches or so like that, that growth is being generated by sugar from this solution, absorbed not by roots because it's a cut plant, but by these minerals and the sugars going directly into the stem tissue and being transported uh, up to the, uh, the growing points. This is the kit that will get your plant started and let you evaluate your introduction to tissue culture before moving on to a full uh, tissue culture kit. How do you do? I'm Bill Graham, maker of the Microclone Super Starts and Super Starts Starter tissue culture kits. We're here at Monster Gardens and we are going to go through the process of putting a plant into tissue culture. That's um, part of the microclone with the plastic vessels and super starts with the glass vessel kits. All need plants to be uh, cuttings to be taken and put into tissue culture. 
but for those of you who would like to sort of take a shortcut uh, or a little cheaper start, we make a starter kit that has tubes that are already prepared, no pressure cooker required, and that's what we're going to do here, is we are going to take cuttings, put them into the Super Start uh, TC starter tubes, but it's the same process that you would do for any of these kits. And this is where we're going to do it. The kit, as it's boxed, contains eight prepared tubes that already have the gel in them. So this is the gel that contains uh, sugar, hydroponic nutrients, the branching hormone, the preservative, sugar, and the uh, auger gel to hold it together. Now it sounds like a lot, but when you buy the kits, these things are all measured and prepared and it's easy to mix them together. We've done the work for you, so these are ready to go. Also in the kit are the tools, um, a scalpel and a forceps. This is what we're going to use to handle the plant after we have uh, cleaned the surface of the plant with um, peroxide water. The technique will be to uh, take plant cuttings, wash them in a peroxide solution, trim them to the size that we want, usually about an inch and a half, and then introduce them into these tubes. What they'll do over the next couple weeks is establish in that gel, begin growing, and if we were unlucky enough to get a bit of contamination in one or the other of them, that contamination will usually reveal itself. The kit will also contain um, a glass of uh, sterile water because we're going to wash the plant in peroxide water and we're going to use the sterile water from the kit to rinse that peroxide off before we plant it. So let's get started. What I've done is I've assembled the station here where we're going to do this work. Not included in the kit, but listed so that you can find it from home will be the plastic storage container, a smooth plate, um, a uh, narrow jar full of alcohol. Here I'm using one of my tubes in a short glass jar, but this will just prevent it from falling over because these tools are heavy. And that is just regular 70% rubbing alcohol. I'm right-handed, so I arrange it with the tools on my right-hand side. This is the sterile water and a peroxide solution from this is ordinary uh, bathroom grocery store peroxide. So let me show you what we're doing. These are cuttings from the uh, redwood tree just outside. These, this is our redwood from our previous introduction. So starts like this eventually grew into plants like this, except this one has been growing over and over again in tissue culture for almost five years. Small plants like that will grow into this whole thing and every one of these one every one of these pieces that can be divided into an inch size piece is going to grow all this many plants all over again. So this is at least 12 or 15 new plants. It wow. is about six weeks old um, but uh, redwood's a good one because redwood grows from burl and we're basically uh, cultivating burl. But every one of these new little plants here will be full grown plants and eventually we're going into soil trays but a piece of this will always go into a brand new vessel over again to give us all of this growth which is why tissue culture is a mother plant system because it's generating all of this new material most of which is going to come out and go into regular rooting that we're used to but with pieces that will go into a brand new mother and grow into all of this again you know if you can imagine this is iris, but this plant started as a small piece, well really, just like we'll do here. A piece like that grew into that, and it will do that every month, every year, forever. So let's take a cutting and make one of these. What I'm going to do here, the uh, kit includes the mason jar with the screen top. This is just water. I've already washed this plant. And we're going to take this and we're going to trim it into uh, pieces that we can um, wash in the solution. So I'm going to trim these down to about, about an inch and a half. There we go. Look at that. Uniform pieces, smooth, without a lot of leaves. Um, I've already trimmed this one. I'll put it in. 
and then we'll do the same thing here. There's one, there's two, and there's three pieces of plant. The size of the piece that we put in we, is kind of an in-between size. We want it small so that it's easy to clean, but the more, bigger it is, the more energy it brings with it and the faster it'll grow once I get it into culture. So these are all about an inch and a half. That's usually about right. And I'll throw those in there. And we can really also do some woodier pieces like this just to test because every one of these leaves, this is redwood, every one of these leaves has a growing point right behind it. So these all have the potential of growing new plants. There we go. So with those in the wash jar, I'm going to add the peroxide. This is going to be about 10 milliliters going into 200. So the dilution is about 1 to 20 peroxide to water. There's also just a little drop of detergent in there to uh, help it break the surface tension. And the reason I put a glass screen lid on this jar is you would ordinarily do this over a sink so that um, we can pour the water out and the plants won't fall out with it. So I'm going to leave these in this solution for about an hour, but over an hour I'm going to swirl it. I'm, we'll take it to the sink and we'll toss it around. I just want to make sure that peroxide solution is washing the inside of the jar as well. So we'll come back to this in an hour after they've had a good soak. So one hour later. One hour later. All right. Uh, I was just saying that, you know, the way that the kit's been put together is this is a lot of what um, I've gotten to learn. First, doing the university tissue culture. And second of all is taking a job from there in the commercial tissue culture business. So we, I used to work for a lab, and we would produce 35 to 50,000 rooted clones every day. So we had a very large greenhouse, about five acres. We expanded to 10. Um, and what you see are the materials and tools that we used for the commercial tissue culture and the university um, techniques squeezed down into what you can do at home. So what I've done is I've drained the hydrogen peroxide solution and now this is where the sterile water comes in. And we'll open this up. Always good that when you're handling anything sterile we work in our clean area over here. I've wiped down all these surfaces with regular rubbing alcohol and all I did was take a regular spray top and put it on the alcohol bottle. You can do whatever you want. Um, I just want to give myself a solution so I can do things like that. I've cleaned the area right at the neck of the jar so that when I pour this, there's not the chance of it picking up something from the side of the jar. This is the sterile water rinse. I'll open the jar and I'll pour that in, usually about half, just because I want to give, give it like a two or three one or two minute soaks so it can help kind of bring down the concentration of peroxide. We just want to clean the outside of the, the plants. So we'll give that two minutes. Drained it in the sink. We'll do that one more time. So this is the second oops this is the second sterile water rinse just like that. And then give that two minutes. Okay. okay. Now we're back. Well, very good. Now we're back. Uh, I have drained the sterile water solution, so now we're ready to put plants into culture. I'll show you what we're doing with the uh, hood here. I'm going to take my plate, and first I'm going to put a couple sprays of the alcohol on it because we want to clean the surface. This is the idea. The plants are clean now. The inside of this jar is clean. Everything the plants touch from now on needs to be sterile clean. There's preservatives in the mix, so don't be afraid but just consider that they are helping you out for the mistakes that you are likely to make. All the time we're just wiping down every surface that you can. Um, and here's how the tools work. If you can see these, I'm right-handed, so I want to be able to reach the forceps first. Now I'm going to take these guys, open the jar, I'll just remove that lid and tilt it to its side. I can get away with this because anything that's floating in the air doesn't go sideways. So this way I can reach the plants by reaching in here and then I'll put that on the plate and all we need to do here, this is very simple, will be just to trim that cut end because the 
peroxide soaked in there or the bleach. There's also instructions for, um, for bleach water. Uh, but um, in either case, it will uh, bleach the cut end, and we just want to trim that off. And then I'll open each one of these tubes. And this is the part people always want to see up close and ask me about. I pick up the plant so that it's in line with the tool because we're going to go down this narrow tube. And then I remove the lid with one hand. And then I just go right down the middle like the operation game. And then I stab it right into the gel. And put the lid back on it. So what's kind of cool is that's all it took to get that plant in. I screw the lid all the way down, then back just a little because we want a little air exchange. And I'll park my tool there and put this in the rack. And I'm ready to wipe this plate, same towel before with the alcohol because I know it's clean. And I'll just wipe that off. And then we're going to spray this plate again, wipe it with alcohol one more time. And then I'm going to take another plant cutting. You see how easy this is. There's that plant. Just a trim, about an eighth of an inch off of the cut end. And then I'll pick it up again in line with the, uh, with the forceps so it'll go straight down. And when I open that bottle, we'll go right down into the gel. There you go. And it's just that simple. If you can see that, uh, it's in about a quarter of an inch. Um, uh, sometimes we put it even deeper. Here's what's important. If you want to know how deep to put it into the gel, a good uh, and important um, model to go by is that this gel is going to be feeding directly into the stem. It doesn't travel up the cut end like some people would think. It actually travels in through the skin. So it takes a little, uh, a few days for the skin to soften up and the um, sugar and the nutrients to soak in. But they'll go directly in. If you have a plant with a node on it, um, which you always need a node, every piece that goes in to tissue culture needs to have a growing point. Uh, I've been asked if you can use flowers for this. Some flowers are okay, but if you have compound flowers, you know, where there's lots of pieces together, you can see that it's difficult to clean effectively and the plant is going to grow from its growing point. The redwoods are good because every one of those little blades has a growing point behind it so we have plenty of room for plants to grow left and right from this. Most of the time with a branching plant you may only have the tip and then the nodes behind each of the developing leaves coming off of that tip. The lowest node I would like to place even with the solution there unless it's too close to the bottom and then I would go ahead and put it under the solution. Most important is that it doesn't slip and fall. But that is uh, has growing points. It is at the proper depth in the, uh, in the gel and the gel is going to soak into the tissue from the side and the growth is going to occur as it gets taller. And what we're going to do with these, because I've got eight more but this is all we need, is over the next couple weeks is we're going to watch these two plants and I'm going to look for them to uh, begin to grow taller. The end that's underneath the solution will tend to get fatter because it's uh, beginning to um, soften and absorb the sugar and nutrients. Those are giving it energy to grow and hormones. Uh, I'm also watching to make sure that nothing funny grows in there. Uh, things we'll see are sometimes yeast which can be milky, uh, you know, uh, puffy white fungus, pink, blue stuff, all bad. Most of the time it just means take another t attempt at it. You're going to need more tubes. Um, you know, maybe you only do like four tubes at a time. You know, you try four pieces and then a couple days later four more pieces. Because you might work slowly the first time and the second time you know what you're doing. But you saw basically what we're doing here, what the tools are. You don't want to reach over the plate. You don't want to put your head in it. I'm working at my arm's length. I'm talking and breathing sideways, not breathing on the plants. I want to work in a clean place like a bathroom or kitchen so that there's not uh, mold spores floating around the air. And if I had a HEPA filter, that would be even better. But I will also won't reach over here with my left hand, but rather I'll take a tool and hand it to myself and then pick up another tool. This way I can work down near the edge of the plate. Instead of up here, we're trying to work down low.
different ways to hold forceps are like this. I prefer to work overhand because it puts my hand where I need them. These are some of the tricks and um, to handling plants with these new tools. And don't be afraid. This is um, this is fun. This is easy. This has been taught to uh, grade school children and middle school kids uh, who have all learned to do it after a couple of attempts. Everybody can learn to do this. The idea is just to clean the surface of the plants, handle them so that they're never exposed to um, uh, dirty surfaces, and to keep these bottles clean when we grow them. And you, thank you again for visiting MonsterGardens.com. I'm Bill Graham. All right. All right. And one thing that I forgot to show you uh, is wrapping the tubes because the kit also comes with the uh, tape. And so what the tape is for is just as an extra level of protection. I like to wrap it right around. I made it. I provide it. So you can wrap it right around the gap from the lid to the tube. Uh, it's not. Um, it's going to have a little tiny hole so the air will get through it because these are never completely sealed, but small enough that they'll prevent uh, bugs and particles and stuff from getting into the tubes. So the tape is just sort of for taping the gap here. Second thing is that when you take the tape off, the um, gap is still clean of dust, just like we sprayed it before. So that's what the tape is for. And I was just about to um, take some tissue culture plants out, cut them, and put them into new tissue culture tubes. Uh, this is our um, redwood, about six weeks old, and obviously so big that it bent over in the tube. If you look at it carefully, you know, we've got little plants popping out all over the place down here. This is already split into two. And since each plant piece I need is only an inch long, I have about five or six of them just out of that long guy but I also like to look at it from the bottom, which is neat, because you can see the different plants coming out all the different directions. This is growing hormone. This is the multiplication hormone. Uh, the cytokine and the hormone that I'm using here is the opposite of rooting hormone, and what it's doing is it's keeping the plant from growing roots, it's keeping it short so the nodes are tight, and it's giving me lots of multiplication sites. Does that look like what we have here? Absolutely. So I'm going to show you how to take this plant out and cut it up and how to put it in the new tubes. First, I'll spray the bottle with a little bit of alcohol right at the gap. Again, always want to keep that clean. And then I will spray my plate. Always the spraying of the plate. 70% rubbing alcohol, just like normal. 90% works fine too, of course. Um, my tools are also in 70% alcohol. And just to make sure the handles are clean, I give them spray so I can see alcohol on the outside and inside of the tools. Even to spray my own hands. Okay, so getting started, I'll shake the drops of alcohol off of there. I'll pop open the lid. I open it with my thumb and hold it at an angle so that uh, air can't fall directly down in there. And then I'm going to move these pieces directly to the plate. I'm done with this. I'll clean it and use make new media in here. Here, we'll start by cutting the largest part of the plant off so we have an easy piece to work with. And then I'm going to divide this into some inch and a half sections because I've got such a big plant. One, two, three, four. And down here, I actually did have a few roots get started. This is what happens when a plant starts to get big and the hormone in the solution gets weak. I don't want those roots today, so I just cut those off. Um, but basically it means that the plant got so big that the hormones I gave it were less powerful than the hormones it was producing. It told me it's, it's a big boy now and it's going to do what it wants. Um, I am just dividing this into enough pieces that I got a little wood at the bottom of each one of these. They're each about an inch and a half long, and I'm pointing the tops to the right hand side. Because I'm right handed, I'll be picking them up from the right hand side and this just makes it easier. Any little brown bits I'm going to cut off and remove but anything that has green tissue even that piece of stem I'm going to keep. Small plants like this that is actually two plants and that will grow no problem. Nice thing about tissue culture is I'm we're growing plants with sugar and nutrients so plants as small as a single cell are grown in tissue culture into full-size trees. And this is also another good piece that's about three quarters of an inch long. So I've lined them all up 
so that the tops are pointing this direction. And I'll show you why. Dip the tools in the alcohol, get the bottle, and then I'll open the lid and one at a time as I'll take these guys and I'll stab them down into the gel. If it slips, don't worry. The vessel's clean. There we go. One is in and then I'll do that again. Again, I want to pick them up so that they're pointed straight down and then when you hit the gel, whoop, they go in about three quarters of an inch or about a quarter of an inch or down to the first or second node. There's a little extra water here, so I'm just going to spill that onto the plate. But that is now a completed tissue culture plant. There's 20 milliliters of gel medium in here, and uh, each plant needs about 10 milliliters or the area of a quarter. So that's my first one. Always working quickly because when the plants are out, they're obviously vulnerable. But I'll do that same thing. Do the first plant. I try to keep the pieces relatively consistent size and age. Um, the second one, right down in there, spill out that extra water. And that is our second plant. Two pieces. You know, don't have to be super careful about how they're spaced. You just sort of begin to get it. It's like a yin and yang. We have enough room for each one of them. And I'll do that now two more times. I'm starting to sound like Martha Stewart. One and two. Now you can see that you can definitely get to where you can work quickly doing this. But these will all be placed on our lighted shelves. Um, I've got four foot T5 fluorescent lights and I only need two lamps for an entire two by four foot shelf to light all of these because we don't, it's, it's like the clone quality light, the amount of light we would give a clone, uh, clone trays, because we only need low light levels. The sugar is giving this energy to grow. The vessel will help keep the plants small because plants are like fish and they grow to the size of their environment. Um, and the hormone is going to keep it from growing roots and keep the nodes tight. One reason I don't want to grow roots here uh, necessarily is because once the roots grow, they use the nutrients faster and I'll have to take them out and move them into new vessels. Unlike regular pots where we're putting nutrients into the pot over and over again, once this is closed, the next time I open this is really just to take the plants out and move them into brand new gel. So just like you saw me take the plant from here and put it into the new one, this is the old gel which is used and this is the new one which is fresh. This will get emptied, made again, and uh, will be the new gel in 30 days when this is the old gel. Oh, um, I wanted to show you a couple of plants and tissue culture that I brought with me. Um, this is African violet. So I don't know if you can see this up close, but you can see all those little bitty leaves, little bitty leaves. What this is, is this is actually about 30, 30 or so African violet plants all growing one on top of another. Each one of these is little, indi little distinct plants. Um, and I'd take this out, put it on the plate, and divide it into as many pieces as I want. Um, again, just like anything else, I really, I only want about this much of this material to go into a brand new mother container, and the rest of these plants all get planted for rooting. And I'll show you how I do that. Uh, this is the same kind of thing, but I did it with ferns. These are from the uh, tissue culture labs at Geopot. Geopot has a tissue culture lab for ferns and I've taken their fern, introduced pieces into tissue culture of my own and these are the uh, ferns that it's produced. Uh, you can see that this is actually seven pieces all grown up big and thick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know I can't tell, it looks like petals on a flower. But each one of those started as a little lump about the size of a pea of ferns, and this is what's grown into. If I want to make another one of these, I need seven more pieces that are the size of peas. Everything else here can be taken out and planted into soil under a dome, and that's where it starts to become a bigger plant, and that's where your new plants come from. 30 days from now, those little pea-sized pieces are going to start getting about this big. African violets, the ferns, and lastly, as I wanted to show you some rooting tissue culture. Um, this is rooting on purpose. 
These are irises. It's a little overdone. These should have been planted a week ago. But what's happened is this is the rooting medium. And you can see that these guys have started growing roots. The tissue culture kits all have a rooting medium in them. And what it's for is if we want to take small plants this big, and you can see that the ferns here would be very small, the African violets here would be very small. These irises were also very small. I can put them on the rooting gel and the rooting hormone will then really get them to grow to about two or three times their size up to about a, two inches tall and begin the growth of roots. These are the plants that I will take out. I can still divide them two or three more times but they're bigger, they're hardier, and they've already started roots and these will all get planted into rooter plugs, rapid rooters, growed in, whatever your preferred plug material is, and then put under a dome, given bottom heat, watered with microbes, and um, uh, you know prevented from drying out, just like you were doing clones. Low light, bottom heat, microbes, uh, protect from dry air. But that's the last two steps of tissue culture, is getting those into uh, the plug trace. And I am at monstergardens.com and you guys get to be the first ones to see this. This is brand new. Um, what we've done is we have taken tissue culture techniques and created a seed starting kit for old seeds uh, or seeds that you um, are valuable that uh, you know just need an extra uh, kick to get them going. Okay, And uh, really I'm going to show you what we got going. It all started when I had friends come to me with like 20 year old seeds they had found in their tackle box and they knew that they were plants that they had really enjoyed. Uh, I'm sure it was something special from grandma. And they were really afraid that if they tried to germinate them like they were, that they could possibly get spoiled uh, when they were germinating them in the paper towels or even if they had put them into soil that they might get fungus or something on them. And those are the things that we're addressing. The special part about tissue culture is that we are using elements like sugar to grow plants and we're also ster surface sterilizing the plants so that they don't have fungus and things on them and these are the two things that we're concerned with when germinating old seeds what we did find was that for uh, other plants that have particularly valuable seeds that um, like orchids for instance that uh, we can give those plants a head start using the exact same techniques so let me show you what we put together in this kit uh, we're going to start by giving the plants a, a surface sterilizing. I'm going to throw seeds into this bottle right here. This is um, a 0.15 percent solution of hydrogen peroxide. Sounds really complex, but really what this is, it's grocery store peroxide diluted five, um, 1 to 20. So I've got about um, 2 milliliters and I added 40 milliliters of water. So we've got the hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to probably include this in the kit just like this. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to throw in a couple of seeds into the surface right here. And then we'll close that up. And what we'll do is we're going to sort of swirl that and rinse the vessel back and forth and leave this in a, in a warm and not brightly lighted location until the um, uh, surface of the seeds is clean. Usually about um, anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour depending on whether you have a smooth surface seed or a rough surface seed. Let's just say that it's been an hour because these are smooth surface seeds. Give it a soak in the hydrogen peroxide and then here's where it gets really special is we're going to move these seeds into a solution of sterilized sugar water uh, with oxygen. So you can see the oxygen's already started to bubble inside. This is where we start to do the special stuff. This has cleaned the outside of the seed so that fungus and things are, are already gone on from the outside of the seeds. Now, I'm going to take those and put them in this solution here. This will, uh, what will happen here is when the plants soak up the germinating liquid over the next couple hours, the liquid they absorb will have a little bit of sugar in it. It's our own recipe. And there's also an oxygen source in this solution. So the plants will be soaking up a little bit of sugar and oxygen, which is exactly what they need to germinate. But the, the problem with 
old seeds is that the enzymes are basically they're slow, tired, or damaged from heat, cold, humid, dry, all the things that can happen. Um, but the seed can still be viable. Our best example of this was in 2009 when the Russians found the little weed seeds in the rat hole and they grew plants from 20,000 year old seeds. We're doing exactly the same thing they're doing. This sugar and oxygen solution will soak into the seed and the seeds will sink. When the sink, seeds have sunk, We'll take those out and we'll move them into these tubes. I don't have the medium, but I've made medium for sterile tubes that contain sterile uh, coca coir with a little bit of sugar and nutrient solution in it. That will give the seed a perfect medium to germinate in. It'll start growing roots in here. It gives the top of the seedling room to grow. And as soon as we see roots start to grow in here, I can use my forceps and take that out. We can extract the entire thing, roots, tops, and everything. Use your imagination. And plant this into whatever we want to. Root plugs, small pots. That, you know, we, it, we will have taken an old seed that may not have germinated and very likely would have become contaminated and been able to grow it into a two inch, uh, two inch seedling um, that we can now plant into an ordinary um, an ordinary pot of soil. Now let's let me go ahead and share one more thing with you too because when we're doing this with healthy seeds like valuable healthy seeds you know there's uh, some um, some special tomatoes and uh, vegetables and things where single seeds may be fifteen or twenty dollars and for fifteen or twenty dollars do you really want to risk just putting them in paper towels using these materials and this exact same technique we've been able to soak hydrate and germinate healthy seedlings that grow this tall in 24 hours. 24 hours to a seedling this tall. Now let's just call that the exception, but two or three days is still impressive and we are doing that because we are putting in mobile sugar um, and uh, oxygen, which is exactly what the plant is supposed to be doing on its own, but we're just doing it a couple stages up up the line from when it ordinarily do it. That is, those are the uh, basic pieces of the microclone seed starting kit. And this is monstergardens.com. All of the best grow products in the world are available at monstergardens.com. Please use the link below the screen.